One of the common rules in strength training is to do compound lifts before isolation lifts. However, this is not true when you're trying to hit a body part that's not responding. Sometimes it's better to do an isolation lift first. This helps you connect to the target muscle. Then when you do the compound lift, you can adjust your technique to make it focus more on the body part that won't develop. So rules are important in strength training, but sometimes it's important to break those rules. I'm glad you've done this one. <clears throat> we haven't talked about this in a while. And that's a that's actually a tip that um, I probably, if I look back at my, my clientele, I probably use that more than I use the rule of, you know, start with a compound lift or start with whatever muscle group we're focused on. Because I felt like most all my clients struggled with with feeling it in in a muscle in one way or another. It was a like, common one. Yeah, like rarely ever did I get my, my clients yeah. to feel or like when they first started be able to feel uh, squats in their glutes uh, or chest. Like chest was a really common one. They would they have a really hard time bench pressing and feeling in their chest. So I find I use, I use this technique a lot more often than not, even though you, we communicate the importance of compound lifts first and the benefits of that, you would find me probably doing isolation exercises with a client first for this exact reason. I, I learned yeah. this as a kid. Um, I was following uh, Mike Menser's heavy duty. This is a, you know, not off topic. There's, there's actually a, the way he prescribes certain workouts because <clears throat> the, the whole philosophy around heavy duty, I'm not advocating for it, but the whole philosophy was they did one all out set to failure and that was enough to stimulate muscle growth. But then the challenge that he would talk about was, well, how do you fully stimulate <clears throat> a muscle with a compound lift, like doing pull-ups, won't the biceps fatigue more than the lats? So his theory was pre-exhaust the lats before doing a pull-up. So you do a pull over and then you would end up doing pull-ups. So that was the theory. Now there's, there's, we don't need to necessarily talk about that, but what I noticed as a kid was it was the first time I got a pump in my lats ever because mm -hmm. I did pullovers before doing pull-ups. So I understood it then. And so with my clients, whenever we do an exercise, and they'd be like, I don't feel that in my butt, or I don't feel that in my quads, or I don't feel that whatever. I would always have them do a light isolation exercise for that body part. Now, the data doesn't show necessarily that you activate more muscle fibers or it's going to you know, necessarily target the muscle more. And that's because the data isn't working with coaches and trainers who use that ability that they now feel that muscle to change your technique and form. That's the key. The key isn't that there's some magic in isolating the muscle first. That's not the magic. The magic is now that you feel your butt and you can feel what it feels like and you got a little bit of a burn and a pump there. Now when you do your squats, move your, 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 change your technique, change your form. So you feel it in your butt. So you have that, that external, you know, feeling you're more conscious oh, there it is. of it. That's you're it. You're more connected that's right. to it. And I think that's, <clears throat> it's an overlooked aspect of training yeah. uh, that I think that's why a lot of uh, time was spent, especially uh, with newer clients coming in, where you really have to devote a lot of time and attention to being able to um, the recruitment process, but also be able to feel uh, these muscles respond uh, because that's beneficial for you um, getting further along the process into the compound lifts. I think that uh, even you can make it an argument that that's probably more valuable of an approach. If you're looking at a single joint approach of being able to kind of understand your body, be able to control your body, uh, be totally. able to slowly load your body, even like going through like body weight and then start loading uh, and making sure you can, you have, control and access uh to these muscles when you need them so there was there was an evolution to that for me um i think originally it started with the i'd normally choose like two you know body weight or isolation exercises that were simple two sets 15 reps real light you know you're not, you're not trying to fatigue the muscle at all you just want to get them connected later on that evolved to more like five to ten reps tops two sets and uh, an isometric hold yep so I like that combined with the uh, ice. I've done both. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So if I if we're doing like say for example, uh, my client can't feel it in, uh, in their glutes when they do squats, and so instead of doing fifteen reps for two set or two sets, fifteen reps of floor bridges, I might only do five reps. But, but it's the, a hard but squeeze. It's a, yeah, it's a hard squeeze at the top. Yes. So I do an isometric hold at the top where they would contract the glutes. I'd be talking to them, hold it there, squeeze the butt. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Getting them to really c uh, concentrate on connecting to that muscle. And I do two sets like that versus just kind of going through the repetition. No, you're right. The squeeze is the most important uh, part of that. That's exactly what I found. By the way, for, for coaches and trainers, this really isn't different than the following cue when you're training someone. You know this as a, tr as a coach. You're telling someone to, to concentrate on this muscle. 
and then they can't. And then what do you do? You go over and you say, you know, can I can I touch it so you can feel it? And they go, sure. Mm-hmm. And then you just put your finger on it. I want you to squeeze this right here. Yeah. That external, you know, signal, that finger on my rhomboid or my lats or on my quad or whatever. Now I know where I need to feel it. That's essentially what you're doing with these isolation lifts before compound. It's not pre-exhaust necessarily. It's not that you're hitting more muscle fibers. It's that it allows you to adjust your form and technique or even just the feel because you can actually see an exercise look almost identical. And to the untrained eye, they will look identical, uh, you know, two different sets. But on one of them, more emphasis is on the lats, let's say. And on the other one, more emphasis is on, let's say, the rhomboids or the biceps, right? So getting that muscle to contract and squeeze and then, oh, that's what that feels like. Now when I do this exercise, oh, let me move my position. This And I, I noticed this with... Use glutes is a great example. I would see my clients squat change. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, I don't feel this on my butt. So we would do some, you know, bridges, squeeze at the top real hard, get them to feel it. And then I'd say, okay, now when you squat, try and feel it in that area. And then you'd see them all of a sudden engage more glutes with just slight changes. Yeah. Uh, and a lot technique. of times you find it's the uh, common postural positions that they're holding throughout the day or through all these years of how they've lifted things. Uh, and, and built and established these hardwired patterns. Like it, it takes work to, uh, you know, deconstruct that to be able to get yeah. you to to um, set yourself in good postural position first in order to contract the muscles to their full potential. And so, uh, you know, that's all part of the training process too. That that gets you know jumped right past into um, trying to work on uh, your aesthetic goals and all these other things. Now, I I learned this just through trial and error and, and training so many clients. Right, you alluded to the the research or the studies and, and data around is kind of weak. Is that because we use like muscle activation as yeah. like the primary We're looking at muscle activation, muscle fiber recruitment. Um, I, I don't know of any studies that look at muscle development or anything like that, but with researchers, what researchers do is they say, do this exercise first, this exercise second. And then they'll say, okay, now this group switch the order. And then they do the, the, you know, they'll, they'll test the muscle. They'll use MRI or something like that to see what's going on. That's not how this works. Right. The way this works is your form and technique will adjust now that you you know where you're supposed to feel it. But if you just go from one to the other and you don't concentrate on what you're There's supposed no to do. There's no coaching there. There's no coaching. That's why I think it doesn't I, make a difference. That's why I think over time I I piece together the uh, isometric hold. Yes. Because even if I just told a client just to rep it out. Yeah, like so yeah. I could, what would happen? I would prescribe this to a client to do before and they, and I you know and they wouldn't they wouldn't be with me. And I'd be like, yeah, Adam's still having a hard time feeling it. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, today we'll do it together. I'll see how it's going. And then they'd be doing it and I'm watching them just go through the motion. I'm like, oh God, it's all hip flexor. They're not even activating the glute still. So they're doing a floor bridge, which is primarily glute, but somehow they're managing to swing it up there with their hip flexors and they're not concentrating on it. And that's where, you know, the the evolution of, okay, wait, 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 hold at the top. Mm -hmm. Now, now squeeze, now flex, squeeze your butt. And then they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I feel that. Okay, now come down. They're achieving full extension a lot of times. Yes, yeah, they exactly, they were. And so- that the the coaching to the the squeeze the hold that's where you're supposed to feel it then going into the squat and sometimes so that was the, the the typical prescription sometimes I had to interrupt even the, the barbell squat sets of like do another one of those like yes they go do it and they'd be like ah, I still have our time okay wait get back down totally again. and we'd have to keep I'm glad you said that 100%. kind of practicing in between sets in between sets to get them to really start to get that connection and then like and then over time it'd be like oh, okay I get it so that's probably why some of these studies are flawed in that area Area too. It's just like, it's not that simple. You can't just take a group of people that are, are relatively untrained or don't understand no. how to connect there and go, oh, do this exercise, this exercise, and see if it makes a no, difference. Your, your the body, intent <clears throat> matters so much. Yeah, and compound lifts involve more muscles in isolation, and your body will move in the way that it feels most comfortable or it feels strongest. So if that means it's not engaging the muscle that you want to engage, then that's the way it's going to move unless you change the technique and form and really emphasize on the change of the technique and form. Have you guys ever seen uh, like arm wrestlers and how they do pull-ups? You ever watch arm wrestlers do pull-ups? Probably like a bicep pull-up. Like very different. Tight, like this, yeah. It looks very different than like when a bodybuilder does a pull-up. You could tell bicep in, you know, forearm versus back, which just the emphasis. I'm using that extreme because it's such an extreme uh, difference. But that's what happens when you do these compound lifts is you have, you know, you, you do a squat. There's a lot of muscles involved, but your prime movers are your, your hamstrings, your quads, your glutes. Well, I mean, you're, the percentage of the quads doing the lift can change dramatically depending on 
what your body feels comfortable with and, and what you're focusing on. And you can change that focus by changing the technique and being aware. And oftentimes you have to go lighter uh, in order to do it. Uh, if well. you had to order the hardest muscles for clients to connect to, I mean, I think they're all going to, well, that's not for true. All, for clients? Yeah, yeah. What Glutes order? and chest. Back. 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 Lats, yeah, yeah, back, oh, lats, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I still would go. I would go because back. Glute. I had to like put people in. I'd like so I feel move like move them into position. Glutes, glutes, lats, chest. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's close because I did have. It's a, all those big movers, right? Yeah, yeah. Ch chest is one of the hardest ones. Yeah, because right. I, I mean, they're, they're, it's all it arms. They'll feel. Yeah. Yeah. And shoulder, yeah, arms and shoulders, and they roll forward every single time. And the flat, and the flat, and that's why I, I moved away from the flat bench. As far Very as more technical, yeah, it was so much easier to get a, a client in a more advantageous position in the incline because it naturally kind of sags the shoulders down and back. Puts them in the position versus them being flat and then kind of pushing their their shoulders forward. Then they end up pushing all their shoulders and, ch and chest. That was probably one of the hardest. Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, these are the final hours for our April sale. MAPS Anywhere, half off. And MAPS Hit, also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Totally, totally. Okay. Dude, I was listening to Dr. J John Deloney's podcast. Yeah. Uh, so for people who don't know, a great, I'm sure people know, great podcast, one of the one of the most downloaded podcasts um, that exists. And callers call in and he helps them, right? He, he takes them through their challenges. But I listened to the most recent episode. I think the title of it is, She Wants Sex More Than more than I Do. That's the title of it, okay? <laughs> she, so this, she does? She does. So this yeah. guy calls in and he's, uh, he sounds like a young guy or whatever. And he's like, man, you know, I just got married two months ago and- you know, I, I, you know, I feel like something's wrong with me. My <laughs> wife wants more sex than I do. And I just don't, you know, whatever. And so of course, you know, Dr. Deloney's like, listen, nothing's wrong with you. You're not broken. Cause you can tell this guy's kind of ashamed. Right. So I'm listening. I'm like, man, what's going on? Poor guy. Right. So, you know, John goes, well, well give me some context. Like, what do you mean by she wants more sex or whatever? He's like, well, you know, she'd be okay with like two times a day. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> you're fine, dude. You're fine, bro. She wants a lot of sex. You're doing all right, dude. Poor guy, you know what I mean? I hear the guy's like, he's all pain. Like, what's wrong with I him? I mean, is, isn't is it like, isn't this way, it, it's, yeah, there's always the going to be one person in every relationship, yes. right? Do you ever feel like it's, I, I don't think it's ever, no. like there's always going to be one person who feels like they could, they, they want more. They want more and then the person yeah. left. And then I also and think- there's seasons. Yeah, yeah. as I say, in, in our in our relationship, that's flip-flop for Katrina and I. So it was Same. it was her first, yeah. and then it was me. And so it's like, we flip-flop. It just kind of depends on the the season, what's going on. Yeah. But I do remember being that way early on, being like, man, I just can't keep up. Like she's the, the amount she wants. And then that flipped to the other side. Uh, and I know that normally is the opposite though, right? Because most- guys deal with like they want it like crazy then the wife has a baby and then it normally changes a lot of times for well, I know, typically you'll hear women or, or, or people say that after they have kids they don't want to have as much sex especially moms will say that yeah i feel like there's two extremes or there's two groups there though there's then the other group that said like oh my god because that kicked up katrina's was after our, that's after, i think she's the minority yeah I, I, yeah yeah i think so too because i think most what was your experience with that Justin? yeah because for me going in it was it was the opposite like i like i was like no, I don't know. Like, cause I was all like the shame and stuff like that. Like I was very much still kind of under my parents' roof, you know, at the time, like I just come back <laughs> that makes sex a lot from awkward. college. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, like we gotta be sneaky. And you know, like, I was, how like, long were you guys there? For? How long were you guys the there for? <clears throat> uh, so I had to live like under her parents' house for like a year. Wow. Well, actually a little bit less than a year, but still. Dude, like, I don't think, eternity. I don't think I've ever had sex with my girl, my parents' house or her parents' house. I really? Think, yeah. I don't think I could. Wow. I, don't, I don't suggest it. You remember, I was out, remember, okay, I was out by 17 years old into my own place. So I've never, oh, right. I never, even I don't sex. even know what that's like to have sex in my yeah. parents' house. So especially being a grown ass man, come yeah. back, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. We're, we're visiting. Yeah. It don't even feel, it don't feel there's right. Not, there's not much will stop me. It was really, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I still, yeah. But yeah, it was funny because it was like, it, it, it definitely shifted once, um, you know, the kid, it was, it was the pregnancy thing. And it, I think it's cause the hormone shift for her was like dramatic. Sure. And, and so it was like, it just, it just completely turned the the dynamic on. And then for me, it was like, well, what? you know, the, the lack of it got my, my increase, like, and it just kept compiling, you know? And so it's like, 
it's just it, it's something we're working on all the time where it's, where it's kind yeah. of back and forth but it's you know it's just a constant communication thing you got to make sure that like hey uh here's here's my needs or here's what i'm feeling today here's your needs here's what you want I mean, to see out of this did it help when you were wearing like the nacho libre outfit and stuff like yeah, that, that yeah. no that i told face? you guys the tool belt and the <laughs> fix it i i would do anything like i was out there like turning <laughs> a wrench she's like, at work he's breaking uh, yeah. shit yeah, yeah, <laughs> trimming trees dude you know i'm like oh, oh yeah the, oh, sawing stuff down. like even if i didn't have to work on something i'm just sawing things outside <laughs> <laughs> hey honey <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, I just felt bad for the guy because you're hearing and you're like, you kind of feel bad for him, you know, and they just got married. You're like, oh man. You, I don't think so. I think it's the opposite. On? I don't think anyone feels bad for him. I think everybody, every dude who's not getting sex is mad well, at no, that I guy. Well, no, I felt bad for him. I felt bad for him because- <laughs> I want to virtually slap him. That's you can hear like. that he thought like something's wrong with him. Yeah. Like he's like, uh, like, oh man, I can't, like what's wrong with me? Is something wrong with me? And then he says she wants it twice a day. I'm like, bro. Well, okay. in, in regards to John, one of the things I love about John Deloney is he's <sighs> such a great communicator. And yeah, he yeah. and boy, does that guy get hit with random the, the hardest questions I've ever yeah, heard. Like yeah. Like I think some like you guys think people might think like some of the stuff that we get at live callers because we get curveballs and stuff like that, but that's easy. Like yeah. he gets really random shit. And then to be able to not only help but somebody through that, but then also be sensitive enough. To like, okay, I got to be careful, like how I say this. Yeah. You hear him in, in in that episode, kind of like trying to articulate like what what he's trying to communicate to the yeah. guy. Yeah, he's not like belittling his his qualm or anything. He's like, you yeah, know, acknowledging it. it. Like for me, I'd be like, you know, I, like I mean, I pick up on stuff here? when I when I listen to him communicate. He's a really good communicator. He really is. Like he does a really good job of. You can tell he's been doing it for a while. Yeah, getting across like really hard conversations, yeah. being very empathetic, but then also direct at the same time. Like there's a real art. You know, I wonder. That. Of course, it's like this, right? Like we will have live callers call in, um, uh, and it was like when we train clients. Like I'll hear three or four sentences, and I already have probably eighty five percent guess on what the issue is because of the experience. Yeah. that I've had working with people. And you guys are the same way. So John's got to be like that, right? Yeah but, you know what, yeah, but you know what we have that's not fair that he doesn't have is that I have you guys, and this happened today's live caller. Oh, that like, there's three I can of jump us? To, I can jump to a conclusion and be like, ah, blah, 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 blah. That's what yeah. I think. And even if I'm, even if I'm like, I'm right eight out of 10 times for that person, I still have you guys to go like, well, it could also be this. Sure, th sure. And then, between yeah, all three of us, yeah, yeah we're going to builds a better model for them. To yeah, we're going to sure. we're going to yeah. nail it, or one of yeah. us is going to hit home with that that person. Yeah. Where John is like yeah. all by himself; he doesn't have two other professionals that I can lean on. Yeah. That like, yeah. okay, I might I might guess wrong. But on I mean, this. you can just hear when people who have a lot of experience communicate that they they that they know where to go or what's happening, or because oftentimes I'll hear like stuff he'll say, and I'll want to say something else, and then I'll hear him respond. And he's on point. It's like, oh, he's he. This guy knows what he's talking about. Do you know? I think that's the biggest uh, like secret sauce to being like a really good trainer is one. It, it just takes time to have that kind of experience totally. to where you've seen enough of these like examples yeah, of it becomes okay. a bit predictive. And then and then you have the ability to communicate that before it happens for a person. That's right. Cause that like, cause when you first get a client and they're just starting off with you, like there, there's this, like, you're just building a relationship. They barely know who you are. Maybe you got referred. Oh, he's a really good trainer. You get the client buys 10 or 20 sessions from you. Yeah. And you're, you're like, I got 20 hours to like win this person over that I could fundamentally help them or change their life or whatever it may be. And part of what solidify would solidify that for me is the ability to read like what their challenges are or what I would or forecast what I knew was coming based off of like their previous patterns, that builds behaviors. Trust, doesn't it? Oh man. And then, and if you could lay that out for them and then it unfolds that yeah. way, it's like, okay, I, I trust this. Yeah. This, this, you trainer. know, I'm looking for this, talking about this. I'm thinking about the live event we have coming up because, uh, you know, we do callers, live callers does this a little bit. I'm so glad we started doing that uh, a while ago because I was feeling so disconnected from like actually working and training people because, yeah. you know, people write in questions and we answer the question. I don't have the ability to, when it's a written question, I don't have the ability to ask more questions. Right. I don't have the ability to dig a little deeper and kind of see what's going on. I just have to answer the question based off of just, you know, whatever they wrote. Um, when you, when you answer questions with a live person, you can get a little deeper and seeing people in person. That's why these live events are so great, right? Because um, almost all these live events that we've done, and we haven't done them in a while, um, but when we do them, we meet with people. Inevitably, they'll come up, talk about how they like the show, and then we'll have a question. Yeah. 
And it's like, oh, I remember this is such a great, it's so stimulating. Well, it's and also, time. don't you also feel like, I mean, it's, that's a hard thing to, for somebody to be vulnerable over text message or be vulnerable, like really like, yeah. uh, like in person, there's that, that, that yes. other sense that like, you know, I'm here and like, we're, I'm confiding in you and it's like just your thing you guys are talking about yep. at that point. And so, you know, for people to call in even here and, and ask us questions and then us go back and forth, it's close. But yeah. like in person, in you person get on a whole other level. It's yeah. huge. It's you don't get the like comparing it again to the like <clears> written in <throat> questions. Like you can ask a very direct question that maybe there's a, a, an answer to that, but that the answer can completely change based off of more information. Hundred percent. So I mean, that, I mean, I, you get to see that in the in the live callers. You get to see where yeah, okay, well, you're gonna hear us. Uh, give contradicting advice, right? Like if someone just asked the question without us knowing more about you, this might be the answer. But then we start digging deeper and we find out this, 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 and this. Sometimes like, the answer is the opposite. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's why it's like, which also too, this is also the thing that irritates me about social media and the fitness space is like it's, there, context matters so much because there's so many variables, especially when you start to insert, you know, behavioral psychology in addition to the nutrition and physiology and everything like that. It's like, Man, uh, sometimes you're going to lean so heavily in in one direction, even if it contradicts what the science might say in, in another area. And so this culture that we've created in Instagram of like doing these videos where we take somebody else's clip and go like, did you see like, I, I hate it. I hate to, what really bothers me is when I see our our friends doing it to our other friends. I know. It's like, oh, oh dude, it's so cringe. I just, and I don't, I'm not going to roll someone on the bus right now, but it's like, I just saw one of our friends doing that to another one of our friends. I'm like, dude, you guys are both good people in the space that are presenting just do the do the godfather thing that you do sometimes <laughs> kiss the Send ring them both a text <laughs> hey, you guys need to relax like, back off yeah. calm, the, calm the fuck you down. want us to talk about you guys yeah <laughs> he's spoken for you know? <laughs> okay i'm sorry no, I'm just i know you know i wait and maybe doug and maybe the editing team could pull this out for us because this is even pre-kyle kyle never even seen this before and uh, remember when we did so i, I just want to point out one okay we had that idea before that shit even happened. We did. This yes. was like six plus years ago. We shot all this content on the, on the green screen. other people. Where we would, we would have a YouTube clip of somebody teaching an exercise or dropping something like that. And the three of us had the mics. Doug had our little yeah. faces down the corner. And we were trying to be kind of comedic about it, right? So we would base, but then what we saw after we created like five of them, we look back and it's like, you we're know like what? Dicks. Yeah. yeah, we just look like it's we're like being, yeah, dicks. And we like, you know what? As funny as it may be, or we even, never heard them, and it's still the same. You look like a douche, and yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy that that we had that. We did it. We decided not to put it out because we didn't like what the met. We saw what it was kind of like. Okay, this doesn't look right. We don't want this for the brand. And then now that's become like the most trendy thing to do yep. on social media. It's so douchey. I hope you can find that, Doug. You got to be able to find some of those clips for the. Don't the, air them here. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just a little bit of it so they can see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think we have the footage somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I think, uh, yeah, why? Are you afraid because how young you look? How, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six years ago? <laughs> how dark your hair is. Like, wow, yeah. you guys. Yeah. When did you guys record this? 96? Uh, yeah, yeah. How fucked up yeah, my yeah, teeth yeah. are? I don't remember <laughs> back that far. They might be horrible. Oh, yeah, that was back then, too. I forgot. Yeah, you were chewing on rocks. Teeth? I remember yeah. that. That's right. Well, I was like, <laughs> did you have hair? You uh, might have had hair, bro. Maybe, maybe had hair. Wow. That's a good question. I don't know. You might, that's so, so long ago, you know, uh, it's a, yeah. six years of Islam is a long yeah, yeah. time. I think I did actually. You did, no, I, I did you actually. Because I think you went bald. I was probably wearing a hat though, so I was probably wearing a hat in the, in the video. Yeah. But by right. the way, the, the 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 live event we're talking about, you can still buy tickets at Mind Pump. Uh, the Bellagio Live. Las Mind Vegas Live dot com. It's in it's in Vegas. Uh, June fifteenth. We want to yeah. see you guys there. Yeah. We're gonna get turned up. Hey, Sal will be up till like nine o'clock. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna, crazy. It's gonna be we're crazy. Keeping them up, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Hey, I learned something. <laughs> the clause. I, <laughs> I learned something frustrating the other day that uh, both frustrating and I never really thought about this. So over the weekend, so as you can hear, my voice is still a little strained. I still have a little bit of laryngitis. Whatever this cold is, it just won't go away. It's just sticking around. It's really strange. But over the weekend, I hadn't gotten asthma in a long time. When I was a kid, I had asthma all the time, all the time. Didn't I you, remember did you, you saying asthma? that, yeah. You never had it, okay. Yeah. So I had, I had asthma as a kid all the time. Every- You're the wheezy kid, right? Every winter <laughs> and sometimes in the fall or summer, especially if I got sick, I'd have to get treatments for asthma. In fact, I, I'd actually got hospitalized a couple times where I, you know, I'd wake my mom up in the middle of the night because I couldn't okay. breathe and they'd have to rush me to the hospital. And I was the allergy kid. Okay. Yeah. Did you have to ever get the nebulizer in the hospital? No, but I had, I had to get shots every week. Did you? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, I just dealt with this for my whole life. So anyway, fast forward, I, I outgrew it probably, 
I'll say probably mid, <clears throat> maybe mid to late teens. It really didn't have to use inhalers or anything like that. Kind of outgrew it. And I have an inhaler that I'll use once every two or three years. If I get sick, sometimes it'll happen as I'll need to use it at night. So I don't like cough all night or whatever. That's it. And it's albuterol. It's just a, it's a beta, a, a beta receptor agonist or whatever. Um, so anyway, I have that. Well, over the weekend, I started getting asthma and I had to use my inhaler like every other hour. I'm like, oh, this sucks. But that usually what that meant when I was a kid and what I used to always use is I would always use the um, albuterol and then I would use an inhaled steroid. Back then it was Beclavent. Now it's Advair is what I use or whatever. So the inhaled steroid is an anti, it's just anti-inflammatory in the lungs. So I'm, I had to use that. So I had to go get a prescription, use that. And it worked. I, I didn't have to use the rescue inhaler so often. And my wife is, she gets the box of it and she reads it and she goes, this says it stunts growth in children. And I'm like, of course, yes, it does. <laughs> if you use these, these anti-inflammatory steroids, these corticosteroids as a kid wow. while you're growing, really, wow. it will it, it has an effect on your growth. Now, if it goes in the lungs, it's less of an effect than if it was oral. Are you saying you could have been like six, eight? You could have been as big as buff yeah. as I am. That's crazy. Well, listen, listen, that, dude, that listen, sucks. Man, listen, you're so much smaller. I'm going to piece this together <laughs> even more. <laughs> that sucks. Now you're going to be the little hey, guy of the no, group. I'm not even, first of all, <laughs> first of all, you're the little guy. The ah, I know I'm shrieking right now. All right. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I increase your dose of his appetite without you doing yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I, I, so I'm reading this and I'm like, oh my God, bro. I used inhaled steroids for like since I was little all the way up until, like I said, probably mid-teens, relatively regularly. I'd have to use them. And the doctor would prescribe it two puffs twice a day or whatever, right? Yeah. So I'm like, holy shit. So here's how stunted growth works when you stunt your growth through those means. The long bones tend to get slightly stunted but other bones don't. Now, I know this about myself, and I've, people have commented, and I know this. If you look at my hands and my feet, they're slightly disproportionately large to my body, and it's true. You and I wear the same size shoe, Yeah, yeah. and you're, what, four inches taller than me? Yeah, three, yeah. I, I probably, I, I bet I could have been like 6'3", bro, 6'2". Wow. I probably lost two inches. That's why you haven't grown into your nose, too. That no. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> hey, you I don't like, have a big hey, nose. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. I don't gonna, I'm going to give you a complex, yeah, though. I'm going to make, yeah. make it a thing. I for told you. I had two classes. Ask me exactly. where, I got my, where I got my nose job. So hey, hey, you want to know You want to know what Katrina's family would tell you about your laryngitis? So I, I'm going to start doing this to you guys because it drives me crazy. She does it to me all the time. Like, it, so Is there something you have to say? Yes. The woo-woo yes. version. Every time... Okay, if you're sick, if, what depending on what the cold yeah, or symptoms yeah, are, yeah. they it always means something, you know. Which you just imagine you, you're sick, you don't feel good, and then I have my wife like telling me like what, that what my problem is. You know, what I'm saying you're like, like I needed to hear this. Yeah. So the laryngitis thing is supposed to be like you, you there's something that you, you have want, to get out. That of your you throat. have to say, you have to say, you want to say, and you're not saying it, and you're not communicating uh, it. So it's like. So it's like you're supposed to go back and go. That's like, not how science works. I, right, yeah, right. I know it's not how it's science. A virus yeah. inflames the, 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 yeah. the, the stomach course. ache. It's something I'm holding on to, right? Or yeah. you wait, or I some shit you have appendicitis. To. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. so, when you, so when you start going bald, like you got something in your mind? Yeah, you? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think she ever attributed coming them. up with an idea. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. Just, you got a, you got you got too many ideas yeah. coming yeah. up, bro. I don't know what the bald one signal. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. So that's yeah. So that's the deal. Because I was reading it, and I'm like, holy shit, bro. Because it's true. If you look at my hands and my feet, they're they're really dude. Big. What could have been, you know? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I kind of yeah. like Kevin, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I was, dude. That, that was <laughs> one that always used to bother me because my dad's six seven, my brother's six three, you know. And like allergy just, medicines. Did you take? They must have shot you up with steroids too, homie. Like, maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll just jump in on that. Like that's yeah. my excuse. Yeah, sure. yeah, you are the the Danny DeVito of the family, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, very penguin like. Yeah. Oh, they're so big. That's crazy. When I you're the run, no, his brothers, his brothers are huge. Yeah, I never Sucks. met your, I never met your brothers. Yeah, no. just one brother. Oh, yeah, your brother. Yeah, yeah. Your brother and brother. dad are huge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. saw your dad. Your dad's a six seven, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a big boy. Does he, is his whole family like that? You know, he was kind of the anomaly. Actually, his uncle, uh, he's six five, six six. Mm. And then, I mean, it's in the family and like, even on my mom's side <laughs> a little bit, but, uh, yeah, somehow just jump past me. Bro, old Italians, especially old Sicilians, were, like my grandmother's generation, my grandfather's generation, maybe even my dad's generation, tiny. Oh, they yeah. were all, yeah, they were all little. And you know, and yeah. when they came to America, 
they've done studies on this with immigrants. When they come to America within a generation or two, they're oh. all much taller. Yeah. It was nutrient nutrients. Yeah. yeah. They all had deficiencies. They were so poor. Wow. That's wow. fucked up. That's crazy. You know, know, speaking of giant men, did you guys see the the post that Shaq did? He had just bought a yacht recently. Did you no. guys see that? Oh my God. No. So the, the internet sometimes is so undefeated, bro. When the, like the comments that somebody, like someone said, so someone had did a comment right there. He's, he did a picture and it's his yachts behind him. He's like, oh, I just got a yacht. What should I name it? And someone said, free throw so you don't sink it because <laughs> <laughs> you'll never sink it <laughs> damn you set himself up for that one no, it's like so good i died laughing he's like, got to get a, really a lot of specially made stuff right because he's so big oh yeah well all the cars he has to like they have to engineer it so the seats in the back seat so they basically put no his way. front seat in the back seat like yeah. that yeah because he's wow what a Dude, bummer like huge. something like that i guarantee he's never been able to drive an exotic car you can't fit in an exotic no car way, like that bro. they're all tiny you have to put on like the, 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 yeah. the pedals are like this like you can't there's no way a guy how that size. crappy would it be if you were as big as him and you were never pro athlete you're just uncomfortable all the time. You know what I mean? For no reason. Right. You just really like to read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, well, I, hey, I feel that way. We did that just the other day. There was a there was a girl who called in, like whenever we assume, right? Because someone's like, this girl was like six foot. And yeah. we're like, oh, did you play any sports? She's like, no. Not it's really. like, oh, just oops. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you feel bad. You're, <laughs> you're just, just awkward. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. No, I mean, uh, I, yeah, that would suck to be that big and uncomfortable without ever making millions of dollars in a sport. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. Right. Crazy. Yeah, Speak, speaking of reading, I read a stat and I, somebody, so you guys have probably heard the stat before. I'm going to pull it up. Um, I read this stat and this individual put it in a way to where it really blew my mind. So trip off this. You're going to love this, Adam. This is, this is right up your alley. <laughs> oh, okay. On average, now I know California's around this, okay? We spend $15,000 per child per year in public schools. So in a public school receives funding generally around fit and it depends on state to state but i know this is true for california fifteen thousand dollars per student per school year now this person says imagine if that money went directly to families and i've always thought that like imagine if a family had 15 yeah, grand for voucher kids, system how much better of an education could they find yeah, yeah. than their local you know whatever here's what this guy put it and I, I never thought of this a teacher a, a really good teacher could set up a micro school with 10 students and pull $150,000, $54,000 a year. Oh, wow. I so hope- a good teacher <clears throat> yeah. can literally just get 10 students, Yeah, take that 15 grand, great model, and yeah. they're, making, they're making way more than they would as a teacher in a public school having to teach 30 kids in a classroom. Yeah, and you got, you got you way, way better, more, way more one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, that was better. one of the most impressive- How crazy is that? Yeah, yeah no. education. No, I mean, it's, I, I hope, I mean, we're starting to see it though. You guys see it, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of people that are trying to disrupt. I mean, I saw Hormozzi the other day. I didn't even know he was building a school. Did you know he was building a school? No. Yeah, what's it? Look it up. Look up what it's called or uh, in where he's at with it right now. But I mean, you got him. You have Elon. You have uh, yeah, there's a few in Texas. The, yeah, um, Tim Kennedy has a really yeah. Tim good Kennedy. School. So there's a lot of people that are starting to disrupt that. I mean, uh, you know what? I re after reading that, imagine if you got enough teachers to because a lot of teachers complain about how little they get paid. They get paid very little. It's hard work, et cetera, et cetera. But imagine if you had enough teachers who are like, you know what? I do a damn good job. I could easily find ten families to pay me. Yeah. Like, let's make this happen. The only so, problem is the, the, the families have the, the money. But if we're able to get the money from the from yeah, the state instead of going to the school. Sure. Oh, my God. They would crush. Yeah. What is it? It's so much better. It's yeah. called school spelled with a K. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we don't need no. Is it is it is it started? Is it live? Uh, I don't know. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. You just did like YouTube. And, you and what is he teaching? YouTube. Uh, yeah, I, I think know, it's, it's more school. business type things. Oh, yeah. I see. Is it specific right. to that? Sure. Yeah. I believe so, but I need, yeah, $10,000 monthly income, community mastery, et cetera. So interesting. I don't think so. it's like, you know, trying to replace standard education. Okay. All right. Hey, but I, I got to tell you guys about an interesting study on cannabis that came out. I'm going to pull it up here. Positive or negative? Um, see, if I tell you, then you'll know what's going to happen. Actually, I'll just read the title. Uh, it's positive. Study links recreational cannabis use to lower risks of cognitive decline and dementia related uh, uh, um, uh, diseases. So what? P yes. So a, a, the, a new study published in the, the journal <coughs> Current Alzheimer Research that looked at 4,744 American adults over 45 using self-reported methods of calculating cognitive decline found those who used cannabis recreation, recreationally had a 96% lower chance of developing what they called subjective <laughs> cognitive decline. 
So okay, why are you, laughing? <laughs> yeah, you know the flaw in that study? It's it self-reported. Self yeah, ask a bunch of stoners. Hey, do you feel smarter than what you were born? <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm fucking way right smarter. I wrote down. I came down up with this too. idea. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think of that, bro. <laughs> look, at, look at all these ideas <laughs> I have. That's the flaw in that study yeah. for sure, I, bro. That's hilarious. Hey, ask a bunch of stoners if they think they're smarter today than <laughs> oh, they were fucking wow. ten years ago when they were smarter. I didn't even piece that together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's hilarious. Me, meanwhile, we have the that's most the first thing that came to mind. You know why I think that too? I used to have so many like friends. They do that for alcohol too. Too. Hey, are you guys doing any better? Even better? the even like the the productivity one, like I bet you there's flawed studies with that too. Because I used to, I remember like at trying to talk my friends from like smoking weed so much. Like, hey, you know, I know you think you're really productive on it and stuff like that, but imagine what you would be. Like, oh no, no, I it makes me get up and I'm motivated when I do it. I just their perception of being high is so positive, so and now, so good. Now to the they report all these to the good defense, the study <clears throat> is following them over time, and they're doing they're they're answering questions like, do you forget this? Do you remember this? Uh, how does this work? How do you feel here? So, um. So there may be something to it because yeah. I have is seen there any other cognitive studies. tests they have to do, or is this just all like yes? So, but it's not done by a researcher. Okay, yeah. that being said, but I did. This does uh, kind of uh, connect to other studies I've seen where because they are researching cannabinoids <coughs> for things like dementia, and Alzheimer's. Now the theory is that it may help with insulin sensitivity, hmm. um, and there may be some neuronal pruning um, effects that may reduce the risks of some of these some of these diseases. So. I, this isn't crazy. It isn't, the, it isn't in the realm of crazy. In fact, Doug, you could look up cannabinoid yeah. research and dementia, and you'll actually find. Well, isn't it? It's studies. mainly the cannabinoids, right? It's not the THC. THC uh, is a cannabinoid. Well, okay, so that's all in combination, yeah. or have they parsed out like no, it's, these specific are, cannabinoids? These are weed users. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting that the study didn't make them either parse out if they were smokers or edible eaters, too, because I would think that would make a difference, too, with dementia. Like, I would imagine smoking and inhaling. Smoking is always going to be worse. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I would think that would be not ideal. Yeah. But, but like I said, <clears throat> um, I've seen other studies and i know that they're Teen studying edible. cannabinoids for um you know brain uh, disorders because they do find that it you, look it well, does affect short-term memory but there may be something to that to where it may prevent other things i mean anecdotally I, it was funny because like when uh, we first started the show like i was probably the least uh user out of all of us and um was always kind of looking out for any kind of new tropic or anything to help out. Like, yeah. cause it was just hard for me to remember things and, and um, had a hard time, you know, from playing football for so long, but just would eat like a five milligram edible, like occasionally. And I, I felt like I could recall information easier. Like yeah. it just, it was my own personal experience. Was Doug, Doug, did you find any studies? <laughs> I wonder if it was that for you or like a, just yeah, there are calming. studies. Yeah, it might be um, that. According to this, though, there are no research studies that prove cannabis or products such as cannabis oil can stop, slow, reverse, or prevent diseases. Right. They haven't done any specific studies. Right. But, it, you know, but agitation, all... dementia, uh, they come with dementia, et cetera. Now, Doug, will you ever use, if you're not with us, will you ever use cannabis at home? Uh, it would be very rare. Yeah, I wouldn't think you do. Yeah. yeah. I, I really don't like it. as yeah. a because it one thing it disrupts my sleep. It helps you go to sleep, but it disrupts my sleep. Yeah. Mm. So it's just when we peer pressure. That's you. not the main reason though. You, mm. you you eat a lot on it. You snack on oh, it. Oh yeah. If I do it, if I do it a little bit earlier in the day, <laughs> uh, you know, my appetite munchies. goes through the roof. Yeah, it's I used just, to use it. That used to be like my way of gaining. Like that was like how I, I use it to bulk. Maybe if they did it. a cannabis terzepatide blend, it might be okay for me. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm pulling up all <laughs> kinds of uh of because they are looking into it and the pharmaceutical companies for a second, I don't know if they still are. Um, are looking at cannabinoids and dementia and Alzheimer's. So, I mean, it's interesting. So here's a study that I just found that that THC saw an improvement in uh, in individuals who used it for things like agitation, aggregate, uh, aggression, irritability, liability, or liability, excuse me, anxiety, and insomnia. Um, they also saw that, that they're... So, so this study was for uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms of dementia. So... Hmm. I don't know. It's very interesting. There's definitely something there is what I'm saying. Just like the studies that show yeah. that people who use cannabis regularly tend to be less, have less body fat. That's a weird one. Have you guys seen those? I've seen those. I've yeah. talked about those yeah, before. Yeah. yeah. I think Which is weird because you think of the munchies and stuff like that, but for that's some- That's why it's so weird. Yeah. That's why it's so interesting to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. yeah now all these people are- Now, how do you- uh, it, what does yours and Jessica's consumption look like with cannabis? I haven't asked you that. In I a long. use a very, I use a lot less now. A lot less. Yeah, maybe. her too, or she still like it? Uh, less, but um, who uses it more? Her, or you? She does. She uses it more than yeah, you. Yeah, she uses it more yeah, than yeah. I do. But I'm, I'm probably, uh, 
Maybe twice a week, once a week. And then week. she's like me. She likes to smoke it, right? She's not an edible person? Either. Oh, either. Yeah, either, yeah, or. Yeah. either one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Edibles are just, I don't know. Katrina prefers an edible. That's normally how I can get her. I, if I see in, inhaling it for me uh, can make me paranoid or anxious uh, during the day. So like going out during the day, I don't like the way it feels. Oh, edibles, never, yeah, preferable. Uh, and you rarely case. ever catch me in the daytime having that. It's normally yeah, yeah, a, a yeah. nighttime thing. Dude, I got to bring up another article that was ridiculous. The the the, <clears throat> the the media is funny with the way they spin things to try to, and people just read head, headlines. So they'll assume what the headline said was correct. But um, I'll, I'll read you the headline first. This is in the Daily Mail health section. Anyway, 16.5 million Americans or at risk of a of stroke from exercising too hard. Oh, is that the is one that Rob, Rob Wolf? Yeah, yeah, yeah Rob Wolf. Study suggests. Okay, so, oh no, <clears throat> you guys working out will give you a stroke. Yeah, this is when I start to think that they are purposely trying. I love to Love what people. they're trying to infer there. Yeah, it's. It, I, this is when I start to think, and I've seen a lot of articles that are rid ridiculous like this. Like, are they literally trying to get people to stop exercising? Are they demonizing exercise? So here's what happened: Indian scientists created a model for how blockages affected arteries in the neck. They found high blood flow in those that were partially blocked raised stroke risk. Therefore, when you're working out and increasing blood flow, you could increase your risk of stroke from the blood flow. <laughs> Stupid, dumb. Just, when yeah. all the studies that we have show unequivocally exercise, exercising properly. How does something like that get funded? Like what's the desired it's outcome? Not a, it's, <clears throat> it's not, I think that the article is what does it. I think the science sensationalize it to get clicks. Yeah, and the study are like, yeah, this actually doesn't mean anything. Well, uh, you know, yeah, and I was wondering too because Rob Wolf made the point. It's like, you know, is this is an attempt to start normalizing like uh, deaths? Uh, you know, that there may be an increase. He was uh, like that we're gonna see. He was like subtly pointing vaccine direction, right? I was assuming that was kind sounded of sounded like that's that what was, was alluding. Yeah, to. It was he yeah. was alluding? To he didn't that. say that, but yeah, it felt like that was it. kind of the 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 undertone yeah. of that. Yeah, and so what it's saying here, this is a simulated, this is like a simulated <clears throat> model. And they're saying scientists found that the healthy and mildly blocked carotid arteries had their health boosted by exercise. But those with severe blockage, the results were described as concerning. Well, if you have severe blockage, uh, a lot of things can cause potential problems. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, if you have an almost fully blocked artery, uh, carotid artery, then going working out real hard might cause a problem. Well, yeah, so... <laughs> So is someone hugging you too hard or I don't know. Like, yeah. it's crazy because yeah. you read the article yeah. or the headline and the average person's like, oh my God, honey, this is why I'm not going to go work out. Yeah. Well, yeah. You I already have a stroke. Doing that, I don't want so another no one. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know what else is crazy? I'm in the I'm in the middle of it right now. I'm probably maybe a little over halfway right now. I'm listening to the Patrick Bet David interview, Suge Knight uh -huh. in prison. Oh, wow. Which is crazy. It's already crazy. You were right? starting to talk about this. And yeah. You had to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Hear. So he, uh, <clears throat> and he basically, I, so I didn't know this. So I've, uh, Patrick Bet David prefaces it before it starts. Suge Knight reached out to him. <clears throat> so Suge Knight's like a fan of the show. Oh, really? And it was like, and, and I don't know if you guys are following he's how, in prison. how much, yeah, he's in prison. So I don't know how much you guys follow PBD and stuff like that and the content he's mm -hmm. been, but he's, he's been going, crushing. yeah, he's been, yeah, he's, he's crushing right now and he's been interviewing all kinds of people and challenged. Like, I think he uh, interviewed P Diddy's lawyer. And so he's like doing a lot of like interviews like that. And Suge Knight reached out to him. It's just like, Hey, call me. I'll, I'll basically spill the beans about Diddy, Tupac, uh, what BIG, whatever. So they, they, they talked about a lot of different things. And one, probably the thought, the thing that I thought was most interesting and he by but and by no means is he defending P Diddy because he's like we're not friends I don't like that fool whatever like he's like so they're he's not but he's like he's he's basically was alluding that like he's just a fall guy he's like first of all he's like where where do you think he learned that behavior sure he's like so yeah. that was that was a top behavior to do uh, that how to use that yes to gain power and yes. Yeah. And so he starts alluding to like the big executives like Clive Owen and and Jimmy Ivey and like some of these big name guys. And he says, and part of what, and then they talked about Cat Williams and what Cat Williams said, like how 2024 is going to be crazy. The reason why that is, is because for so many decades, there's been this machine that's produced artists. And, the, and there's been the people at the top that have decided who's going to be the most famous, who's going to make what money, and the all these- The gatekeepers. The gatekeepers of this for the longest time. And they've had ways to entrap people and mm -hmm. control them and manipulate them. And this has been being made, been, this has been happening for a very long time. 
And for the first time ever, it's being massively disrupted. And because it's being disrupted, that's why all this stuff is, is coming out because it's no longer working. This these The powers that be can no longer like control and decide who's going to be the most famous. So you it's know. all falling apart. Yeah, so it's all falling apart, which is how, how and why Cat Williams was able to predict what he's predicting oh. is unfolding. And then he said something else hmm. that I never heard anyone say. He referred to Illuminati and and uh mace freemasons mm -hmm. and he and he he referred to freemasons as like god fearing god believing like underground like high power group and illuminati is like devil worshiping devil like like have you heard any of that i know you're more into reading all that stuff yeah yeah i've read about all that stuff. you have like skull and bones and all the secret societies and i mean there's there's a lot of like intertwining crossover too and you get like further in the levels of each and like 33rd masons and all that yeah and so it's yeah because it's a lot of the secretive stuff like they have like rituals and it's all like um on the surface they do a lot of community work and um the illuminati itself this has always been one that that um it, like it there's references back in in in, in the day for um, the Knights Templar uh, sort of being excommunicated from mm. the church and like you know from going and 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 having uh, that that whole war where they collect a lot of relics and stuff and mm -hmm. so they they've I mean they they've tied the, the them to a lot of the different relics that are gone like the Ark of the Covenant and like this and that mm. and the, the, they had their hands on it and they hid it and they have all this like secret knowledge and power and that they sort of turned that once they got excommunicated like a lot of them went underground and created Illuminati and so anyway this is all like like crazy like real rabbit hole stuff that I uh, you know I I I read a bit of the Dan Brown books and you know stuff like that about symbolism so Illumin uh, Illuminati is supposed to be like Satan worshiping? Yeah. Okay. And free masons. It, that kind of makes sense. Illuminati, you know, Lucifer, light. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's the light, light being or light, light, light bearer. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the interview is sucking me in right now. I'm like, ha I think I'm halfway through it. There's already. a lot of Freemasonry symbolism on old buildings and a lot of the presidents were Freemasons. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, and it, what is it? It's a protractor, right? Or what uh, is that? And yeah. like even this and like, uh, so if you look at like Gmail and all that, they have like a little, pouch that they have like in their ceremonies it looks so if you, that's why you look at a lot of these big like tech companies and you see a lot of their uh logos and symbolism like there's freemasonry stuff that's in there too weird. with the protractors yeah. there's yeah. a lot of weird i mean stuff. Have there, you, and you know and so part of like you know it was funny because katrina told me about the interview first and then she was talking about yeah but then he was and, and I, I like i started saying like oh i bet he's defending himself like this and she's like oh my god that's exactly how he's defending himself. i said well yeah of course he's like i'm like so he's he he's thrusted into this industry that is completely corrupt, dirty, so that, and he's just was a bigger, badder motherfucker than all those guys. I mean, try try messing with Suge, like he's like that. He's real gangster, and so of Didn't course, he hold uh, uh yeah, uh, what's his name? Well, Vanilla Ice, Ice over yes, a balcony. Yes, <laughs> he's got all kinds of crazy stories. I love that. But story. that was that yeah. was his way of controlling an uncontrollable environment like that. And of course, he ends up losing that battle because he's not connected enough and powerful enough, and so Whoa. he. Did what he could do to get to where he's at and supposedly like his company was worth like five or seven hundred million dollars before he went in and it was it was all to get him in so then they could basically rip the company out from underneath him for pennies on the dollar did, did you have wow. you guys ever seen since we're going down here have you ever seen that video i don't know what it was i think it was george bush senior's funeral or trump's inauguration i don't remember what it was but like all these like clinton and you know hillary clinton all these people were getting envelopes at this event and they're opening them, and then all of their faces drop. Have yeah. you seen that video? Uh -huh. What was that? No, I haven't it, seen that. Yeah, Again. I've seen that. What was I think that, that was at H.W. Uh, Bush's funeral. Bro, you haven't seen that video? They, they no. The, so Pull it up, Doug. The speculation, of course, to like the It was the telling that Epstein was going to get it, caught? Exactly. Like It was like a revealing of like So Epstein at this thing, we have all these like ex-presidents and powerful people. All yeah. of them get this mysterious envelope, and they yeah, all open yeah, it yeah. kind of on the same time. I do find it the really- on their faces. That was when, uh, was it when Hillary Clinton's uh, like emails were starting to get yes. looked at? Like it was kind of the timing of that was all interesting. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. weird. I do find it really interesting, and I uh, the most interesting thing about the show thing was him making that point and it's like you know that's so true like you all of us are like oh my god right epstein diddy oh such but people it's like this is learned behavior like somebody taught these yeah. guys this is the formula what you do with these powerful rich people 
yeah is shower them with money and women and sex and drugs and have a good time and record these motherfuckers doing all this stuff and then you hold that over their head and think about intelligence agencies what's the best way to get intel on people you know the honey pot is like yeah for and so now you could look all the way back and this is my own theory but like project mockingbird yeah and and you get into that sort of a a understanding of how intelligence agencies got their fingers in every single entertainment industry and they were able to control messaging and propaganda and what was coming in and out of Hollywood uh, exclusively. And it, it's like, this is just stuff that gets overlooked, but it, it never left. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that's what both Kat and Shug yeah, were saying. No. It was just like, dude, Hollywood is, is, isn't is designed to entertain you. It's by a byproduct, it entertains it's you. Prop- it's, it's been propaganda look at, look at, they want. These are the envelopes that, that as they're opening them, the, the looks on their faces are like, what? Oh, that's just one, one clip. But it goes through a bunch of really. So did you hear? People. Did you know this yeah. along these lines? As we're talking about this in Hollywood, I saw an so interview with Hillary. Uh, they just yeah. all freaking out. They all have yeah, these they, same strange they look all like scared. So I saw an interview with uh, Candace Owens, and then I saw another interview with um, forget who else was saying it. But yeah, and Doug can Google this and look this up. Do you know how many? Do you know that the Pentagon has a allocated budget for Hollywood? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know that. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. And some of the the biggest movies that we have that we've had that were like biggest blockbuster movies that have ever that ever happened were funded yep. by them. Yep. So it's I, propaganda machine. Yes, yeah. you've heard. Yeah. Did, did you guys ever hear Eisenhower's one of his farewell speeches on on beware of the military industrial um, complex? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He literally he literally did a speech to the American public and he told them this monster, we need to stop this monster, this military industrial complex. They are pulling the strings and they ignored it. You yeah. could pull it up and listen to it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's, a- <laughs> well, it's all out in the open now. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, we're to listen to the one that I, like I said, I'm listening. To. It's a little tough to listen to because it's obviously, it's like every 15 minutes it gets oh, interrupted. Oh, he's calling from prison. Yeah, he's calling for wow. prison. So they had to put it, so it's an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and a half interview in 15 minute blocks. Oh, wow. So you, like you hear the operator come on and then it's like, you. They, I mean, they tried their best to edit it so there's not a gap for the listener, but you still know because you hear the operator come on in the background and then that, then the next clip gets edited and smushed in or whatever. And he is on a phone, but I thought PBD did a pretty good job of like, he would say something and then he'd clarify it in case you're like trying, mm-hmm. to, trying to listen to what he was saying. But super, super interesting what he was, what he was dropping on there. You know? This year's going to be weird. Well, it's just getting it's just getting more weird. I'm not looking like. forward to it. Yeah. Right. Look, it's a by the way, the shout out is uh our live event. It's mindpumplive.com. We still have spots available if you want to come see us. Live event in Las Vegas on June 15th. Get yourself signed up. Butcher Box is a company that delivers grass-fed meats, heritage pork, uh free-range chicken, wild-caught fish to your door at great prices. Go check them out. Get healthy meat, good protein. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get $20 off your first box. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Tyler from Minnesota. What up, Tyler? What's up, Tyler? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Nice to meet you in person. It's so cool to like see you guys versus just like on the podcast. So it's a pleasure to meet you guys. Right Thank on, you. Right you too, on. man. Sweet. So I'll get right into my question. So I'm 5'10, I'm 19 years old, and I'm currently a collegiate athlete. So. During my first college season, which was last fall, I dropped from 145 pounds down to 135, 130 pounds, which put me at like seven to eight percent body fat. This was mainly due to me like under eating at like 2,300 calories and then also overtraining basically every single day with practice and then doing stuff outside of that. I was taking around 20,000 to 2,500 steps a day and I wasn't like in a good place mentally or physically. And then that's when I found your guys' podcast and I started listening to you guys and you talked about like reverse dieting, things like that. And that, that really helped me. I started bulking. I started weight training more. I cut my cardio down and then all my lifts started to go up. I actually put on 20 pounds to all my squat, deadlift and bench press. Actually more, um, more than that on like my deadlift, which is pretty good. And now I'm sitting at about 12% body fat and I'm feeling a lot healthier. So thank you guys for that. Awesome. Right so, on. yeah. So my question for you guys is, as I get closer to my upcoming, upcoming season next fall, how can I continue to gain muscle while also focusing on my sport, especially because I'll have increased amounts of cardio and be focusing on practice and things like that. So like what kind of programming do you guys recommend? 
Great and question. my second part, yeah, my second half of that question is also, how can I continue or should I continue to bulk around like 2,700 calories or should I go more into like a maintenance or cutting phase? Good question. <clears throat> so are you still, um, cause you're, you're not in season right now, right? Yeah. How long until, I'm not, no. how, how long until training starts for the season? <clears throat> It'll be August. Okay. Okay. So like now, four months during this period of time. Have you done any, have you played any soccer? Have you done any, any games on your own clubs? Uh, in yeah, we have off season training, which will be like four times a week. So that will, okay my car a little bit but outside of that i won't do a lot of like extra work on side or like extra running now you, how much do you weigh now because you weighed 135 before now and, and since you've been reverse dieting all that stuff uh, what's your body weight at now yeah. i'm at 146 okay and then how do you feel performance wise has it positively or negatively impacted your performance on the field um i'd say it's positively impacted for sure i feel stronger before I felt like a little bit weaker like I would run out of energy sometimes now that like I'm eating more and have, I feel like I have more energy and just a little bit stronger too okay good and you're, you're a collegiate athlete so this is your pretty high level I feel like performance <laughs> advanced and yep. staying in maintenance yeah. I, I would not surplus I would not try to gain muscle while <coughs> in season so no. the, the goal <coughs> the goal is not to chase um, you know, a, a lot of physical progress when in season, the, yeah. the goal when in season is to try to maintain your health and prevent injury off season is when you want to build. And here's why, if you push trying to gain while playing the typically what happens is the risk of injury tends to go up quite a bit. So really it's about reducing the volume of your training and it's about eating appropriately. I don't think you should ever go in a cut. No. When in season, I think you should eat and feed your body and try to maintain or, or gain a little bit if that feels okay, but you're not trying to make okay. any big changes, right? So you're yeah. not trying to go crazy bulk, definitely not go on a cut. What does your practice and game schedule look like when you're in season? Four days a week, right? Is that in season? Oh, yeah. so the in season, it's usually five or six days a week. We also have a preseason where we're doing like double days. So during that time, I'll usually be hitting in. 20,000 steps a day at least. Okay. okay. I think uh, what would probably be an appropriate way to strength train during that period of time would be like one or two lifts a day. Yeah, MAPS max. 15. Yeah, MAPS 15 would be a good kind of baseline program for you. I don't think you should do a full strength training workout, you know, one or two days a week while you're doing that. You're just trying to maintain health, mobility, and strength. Yeah. And even the intensity of the strength training is going to be moderate. What about uh, his four best. months leading up to that? That's what he's getting at. Right four now. months leading up to it, we could still, yeah, performance yeah. Advanced. mass performance advanced would be your would be your, your game changer. And, yeah. and and I would eat in a okay. slight surplus while doing that just to fuel performance. Games. Now, any modifications to that because he's doing soccer four times a week, even in the off season right now. So he's playing, he's going to be, uh, would you pull back a day or would you replace like some of the skilled, would you count that as his skills days? You could take a skill day out. It depends on like how much volume that is. Yeah. In terms of you being taxed. So you'd have to like really uh, pay attention to your body's feedback with that. However, it would be, you know, just as a good idea to apply a skill session and then go to practice, depending on if that's, you know, an appropriate amount of stress. How, when you're playing, when you're doing the four days a week now off season, what does that look like? Give me, the, give me a rundown of a day. Yeah. So we'll do normally like two harder sessions and then two lighter sessions. Oh, so it cool. does alternate a little bit. So there are some days where Perfect. it's a little bit more recovery based and just skills are not actually running as much, which oh, is great. nice. So we have a little time to recover there. And then there will be two harder days where it's around 10,000 steps and a little bit more now, vigorous you, cardio focused. How long are the, are the, are the sessions when you're doing the hard, uh, the hard days? Hour and a half to two hours. Usually it's around an hour and a half. Okay. And then, so, okay. So someone like you at your level of training, you've been doing this for a long time at your age. How do you feel in the off season with this? Does it feel like, no, like a piece of cake or are you like, oh my God, this is really hard? Um, I do find it. It's pretty easy for me most of the time. Okay. I've been in pretty good cardio shape my whole life. So like coming out of it into like off season stuff, it feels pretty easy, which is nice. I think mass performance advanced would be good. And I think replay and then I think taking out one of those, one of the skills days. And if you're, t if you feel yeah. tired or reduce the volume on the training of the, of the program, but in the off season, I think you'd be okay because your body has, yeah. is built such high resilience for that kind of training. I don't think it's 
push you mm-hmm. too far. What's the other? Well, option? even so, even on those skill days, you'll you'll see there's specific um, priming sequences, like a a list of like mobility exercises for you to prime before some of these skill days. So you could even apply that priming sequence before your intensified practice. So that would still be valuable to you. Just it's really like trying to. Uh, teach the body these these specific movements so you respond at an even greater level. So, um, but yeah, that's that would be sort of my recommendation. Yeah, let's do this, Tyler, since uh, like this will be and this will be fun for us and good for our audience and our people in our forum. I'm gonna have Doug give you performance advance. I'm also gonna have him put you in the forum, and then you can start to unpack the program, apply it yourself, and then if you have questions, just message us in the forum. Like, hey, I was thinking about doing this. Is that too much? And then and Justin or us will respond to you like, yeah, it's a good call or whatever like that if you have any yep. questions. But I think uh, MAPS performance advanced heading into the season and then MAPS 15 when you get into season, yep. we'll get you started yep. on advanced right now. Great recipe for you. Yeah. How, mm-hmm. how long have you been consistently playing uh, high-level soccer, by the way? So this is my second i'll be going into my second year of collegiate soccer and i was playing before that probably like four years so i'm at five years of high intensity soccer and before that it was i did multi-sport before that too okay okay and the reason why i ask that is your your ability to tolerate exercise stress is a lot higher than the average Mm -hmm. person so and and that's why i asked Mm -hmm. how you felt with your off-season training if i took the average person they told me they played soccer four days a week that's a lot for the average person but someone at your level, it's, yeah. it feels yeah. like you're probably cruising. Yeah, it yeah. feels like it's probably easy for you. So I think mass performance advance would be perfect. All, yeah. Also, do you feel disrespected that Sal wears Sambas? <laughs> 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 no, he's good. He's he can wear ready, whatever dude. he wants. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Just check it. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. I'm the, hey, by the way, I'm the one that says soccer is one of the top sports in the world. These guys that talk shit all the time. <laughs> we do talk shit. All right. All right. I appreciate that. that. Yeah. We got you, Tyler. We're going to send that over to you, get you in the forum and then just uh, hit us up if you got any questions bro look forward to seeing how it works out for you all right thank you guys so much appreciate you you thanks brother uh you know a a good point to make with that is um you know like when i would train like blue collar workers who were doing you know the construction already adapted to the yeah it's like it's like you know i I, look i I used to go every summer animal yeah yeah every summer i'd go and i'd work with my dad and you know even as a fit you know 16 17 year old kid i'd just get hammered my dad would whistle while he's working it wouldn't a big deal and that just goes to show like like the the your tolerance for that type of stress when you've been doing it for so long and you're acclimated is just it's it's so different yeah, like, they're much more energy efficient yeah so like it's like sometimes people hear us talk to the average person who's like oh I, you know i do you know f45 f- f- four days a week and, and we're been, telling you know, him to scale way back way, way back much, right yeah. he's 19 years old he's been playing high level soccer for a long time he, he doesn't have kids hopefully i don't think he does and <laughs> you know at his age and, and you know stuff like that so you know uh, and he's gained muscle and he's bumped his calories up and he's given us no indication that he's overtrained in fact he said it feels like it's cruising so adding something like mass performance is totally appropriate. That's that just highlights the individual variance. Yeah, that's why I love that we do these right here because, and again, why I can't stand short form reels and shorts yeah. and stuff. That's one minute on and right. get into these debates with yeah, trainers of like, matters. yeah, that makes a huge difference. That's that same like that same question could be asked by a different person. That's right. And after we find out enough information, <laughs> the advice is completely different. It's not, you know, it's not that generic that it's just like, oh yeah, you're an athlete, this applies. Or, oh, you want to play soccer? Oh, this applies. It's like, no, there's it's new, more nuance than that. Our next caller is Adam from the Cayman Islands. What's up, Adam? How you can we help man? you? Hey, a really great to speak to you, Sal, Adam and Justin. Really appreciate you uh, taking my call and uh, thank you for inviting me on. Um, I've been listening to you guys since 2021 and your podcast got me through COVID. Uh, Your banter, your variety of conversation topics just allowed me to kind of really ground myself during that time and mentally I really appreciate it. Uh, Physically, I have two of your programs, Anabolic and and, uh, Aesthetic. Um, but it's only been this year that I've really run them with fidelity. Um, I've been focused on making sure I do the trigger sessions and the focus sessions. Um, I'm 49. I'm in the best shape of my life right now. And that's down to you guys. Um, my only criticism is where were you 30 years ago with these programs? <laughs> yeah. Then I realized you were probably only 15. Or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, we're, we're just yeah. starting to figure it out. Yeah. Adam was in the woods with 30 magazines. So my question is, um, I'm in the second phase of the Aesthetics Maps program at the moment. 
Um, and I was wondering, instead of the focus sessions, can I instead swim 10 lengths using arms only for one focus session or swim with just legs for the next focus session? <laughs> like Would it have the same effect? <laughs> I happen to be lucky enough to have access to a pool at the moment and would like to maximize the use um, of it. What's what's the effect that you're that you're looking for? Um, I guess now I've started really using the focus and trigger sessions. I see more kind of definition. Okay. Well, definition is more of a just a fat loss uh, effect. So that's more like diet calorie deficit. Uh, if you're looking for the effect of the focus session in terms of muscle building, it won't give you the same effect. However, you will get other effects that you may uh, you may want, right? Stamina, uh, endurance, um, stability in the joints of the shoulders and the hips. So it, it's a it's activity. It's good for you. It gives you stamina um, and endurance. And if you really really enjoy it, especially if you enjoy it more than your traditional focus session, then do it. Then, then do it. That's, I mean, that's the way I would approach this question. Is it the best way to build your arms? No, but if you got a pool and part of your goal is, Hey, I want to use this thing. This would yeah. be nice. I like it. I enjoy it. It ain't going to hurt you. No. You're not going right. to, you're not going to lose muscle from doing 10 lengths three times for, you know, arms and legs for swimming. Uh, you're not going to, that's not going to hurt you. If anything, it's only going to benefit you on the cardiovascular point that Sal's making. It's very good for you. And if you enjoy it, I I, I see lots of benefit to it. But it, it's not the fastest way to get the biggest arms, if that was the question. Like if you said, yo, I want jacked arms. I was thinking about doing this instead of that. I'd say, well, you'd be better off doing the focus sessions. That's going to grow your arms faster. But if you're a client of mine who wants to use his pool and wants to do this, this is where I would totally modify right. the program. Okay, yeah, that, that all makes sense. Um well, you you guys haven't really spoken that much about swimming. Um, I remember one of you going through kind of uh, a swimming program, yeah. And um, you know, what? How, how can I maybe maximize the use of my pool? And I mean, so at that time in my life, I was kind of coming off my mobility kick. I wanted to get back in cardiovascular shape. It was a new skill for me. I really looked at it as like you know, part of what has kept me training for over twenty years of my life consistently is, you know, I like to move in and out of different modalities to challenge myself. I did not approach it like this is going to get me in the best shape aesthetically or this is going to get me in the best. Like it really was I, the, the value of consistency, consistently moving and training and trying new things is so good for the body. That was that's the mental approach I would tell you to have towards something like that. And then if you don't want it to impede on all the muscle that you built, just like I didn't want it to impede on that, just be uh, aware of how much of it you're doing. If it turns into right. hour long plus cardio sessions, that's probably not benefiting uh, the amount of lean body mass you have. And you, in fact, you're probably going to probably lose a little bit from doing so much cardio. But if you're doing, you know, 10 lengths, I don't know how long that takes, but that's not very long to do. 10 lengths of the pool is definitely not no hour of cardio. Um, <clears throat> no, that, no. That, that's not going to impede that at all. So I, I love you, uh, you know, intermittently adding that into your week, you know, anywhere from, you know, two to four times a week, I think is a good amount of volume. That's not going to overdo it and lose muscle from it. And I think would get, gain a ton of benefit and enjoy it. Yeah. I, I would say if you're going to do a lot more swimming, then I wouldn't do maps aesthetic because that's such a high volume program. We have other programs right. that would be more appropriate if you were going to do a lot of swimming or he right? would replace it with the focus days, yeah, right? Cause just, like, right, right. Like what you're doing here is fine, but let's say you want to swim five days a week and you really wanted to go and, and, and really work on it. Then I would go to a different program with less volume. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I prefer in a way the anabolic for this one probably is yeah, that something yeah. that you yeah. would suggest would, as well. Yep. Yep, I would suggest that. And, yeah. and what's great about anabolic. It's so, I think in, in its simplicity, the way it's structured, and to Sal's point, if like all of a sudden you're like really getting into the swimming, you're like, man, this is, I'm enjoying this. I'm gonna go five days a week and man, I'm starting to do 40 minutes of it. Well, then you scale all the way back to one day a week of anabolic and then five days of swimming because you're loving swimming so much. Or you're somewhere in the middle where you're like, ah, three days a week of swimming is good, but I still love the strength training. So you do two days a week. You can really, yep. but you just got to know how to listen to your body and, and tell if, are you recovering well? Do you feel good? Are you still staying strong? And let that be your driver of, oh, I probably need to scale back a little bit because I'm doing so much swimming or let that be the driver to increase the volume of training. And anabolic is an easy program to kind of, you know, <clears throat> figure out how to do that. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's a great answer. In fact, the 
um, I do need to listen to my body more. I feel like sometimes I overdo it and then I have to have, you know, a week or two out because, yeah, yeah. you know, my body's still recovering, especially as I age, I seem to have found that's an issue. Yeah. yeah. You know what a good program is too, uh, where just less volume and it just takes, kind of takes those things into account is our MAPS 40 plus uh, program, which is similar to MAPS anabolic in the way it's created. Uh, but some of the exercises are modified. You, you mentioned your age. Uh, do you have that program? Yeah, less impact on the joints. Yeah, very valuable of, program. Yeah, a lot of better exercises. No, I, no, I don't actually. No, I haven't got that one at I'll all. Send, I'll send that to you, yeah. Adam. Oh, yeah, no, that's appreciated. Thank you. I'll take a look for sure. You got it, my friend. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, but that's obviously um, something similar to anabolic. So therefore, I just have to play around with it a little bit that's in relation right. to adding swimming in within that. That's program. right. That's right. I'm going to have uh, Doug send a suitcase of money to you, too, if you could take care of that for us while you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not in banking. Oh, I'm in education. Shit. Come but... <laughs> on, Adam. Come on. It's the yeah. point of having you out there. <laughs> <That's> yeah, <right. laughs> hey, if any of you visit any time, feel free to drop me a line. I'll show you around. All right. Uh, All right. Thank cool. you. Thanks, Adam. Hey, thanks very much for answering the question and taking the time. Really appreciate you guys. You got it, man. All right. Take it easy. Thank you. Where are the Cayman Islands? Well, I think it's in the Caribbean. Uh, I don't know exactly where. Is it with Turks with and Caicos and all that stuff like that, right? Yeah, I think it's down What's in the, the deal same with general area. Because it's in a, it's because of where it's at, like uh, the, the rules and <coughs> like no laws. Jurisdiction. Yes. Yeah. yeah like they. Outside. I don't think they have any taxes yes. in, yeah. in the Cayman Islands. Yeah. So that's what so all it, those. That's where all those shelter for a lot of people. Yeah. So what is it like? They like that. Like a company's profits. Like, is it near that? Puerto Rico? Like is Swiss bank is it near Puerto Rico? Yeah. And so, so the deal is that you could deposit. A company could have profits there, and then as long as you keep them there, they don't get taxed the same way. That's right. Is that is that correct? Yeah. I, that yeah. That's that's correct. In but you know, obviously, we're dealing with the IRS, and yeah, they have a, a way of taxing everybody's money everywhere. <laughs> so I would. Be There's got to be some legal reasons. Well, you know, sure you know, you it. see, like uh, you know, the the Paul brothers now are in Puerto Rico, right? Well, that's yeah, but that's legal. Is yeah. what I'm saying. So there must be some legal thing. That's well, like, there is. I mean, the country yeah. itself has no income tax, as far as I know. Right. I think so, you have to live in Puerto Rico for like oh, six yeah. months in a day or something. No, like so yeah, what yeah. a lot of people have done in the past is they've created companies in the Cayman Islands and then had the money there. Now, if you try to repatriate it, uh, repatriate it and bring it back to the then US, it gets taxed. then it gets taxed. But officially, I think the IRS says it gets taxed anyway. Um Oh really? Yeah, I I don't know the exact rules. So I'm Doug sure they it. figured that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doug's already lost a suitcase of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. like, don't take that advice from Adam. Do it. Oh, I'm just very uh, nervous about some of these yeah. offshore plans people put out there. Yeah, so of course. Just so you know, of oh, course. Risky. Last people you want to mess with. But anyway, I think uh, his he had a great question, and it really just depends on you know what you enjoy doing. So you know his if you enjoy swimming, there's nothing wrong with. Yeah. Doing that is training around that. That's it. I mean, well, that's you, he's not going to build as much muscle. So what? You and, know? I, and I like stuff like that again, especially as we age. Right. I mean, at least for me, I've had to do this type of stuff just to keep it interesting for yeah. me. Yeah. Doing the same shit to be jacked yeah. all the time. I, I get bored of you that. You got to enjoy all. what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if he's in, he's got a pool now by his side and it's like, man, that's going to just help that's your awesome. fitness. Do it, man. Next caller is Jacqueline from Dubai. Uh -huh. Hey, Jacqueline, how Dubai. can we help you? Hey guys, trying not to sound girl too hard right now. Like, you know how most people listen to calm or headspace when they need to relax? Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I feel stressed and I hear, like, see one of those what it eat in a day videos of those people having those obnoxiously low, like, amounts of food. <laughs> I play your guys' episodes and it gets me through my meals. So it's, oh, it's been a lot of support. We, we, make, we make people hungry. <laughs> Great. How can we help you, Jacqueline? Right. So I've got like a three-parter kind of question. The first part is, you know, I'm, I need to gain weight and I need to start strength training. I have osteoporosis, so the strength itself is really important. But I go to the gym a lot and I see the women that end up weight training, strength training that for better or like time of the word, they look a little bit usually chunkier or thicker. Like they look strong, but like what I want is like that more like that lean defined kind of look. I mean, like the second part is I've been wanting to grow my, grow my glutes a lot. You know, I love the look of like the snapped waist with the glutes and, but how much of that composition is due to genetics? Cause I see a lot of women again, working their glutes, but they never have the smaller waist. And for example, I've been, I've spent a lot of time at one point below 5% body fat and I never had a defined core or defined abs. So I'm thinking like, like I said, I want to know how much of it is composition, how much of it is 
training, how much of it is just down to genetics. Like you'll never have a specific shape. And I have MAPS anabolic at the moment. That's the third part of the question. And I really struggle with the the breaks during the workout. So what I try and do is I try and superset exercises. So for example, I'll do a bicep curl, try something with the triceps and then maybe squats. Like I'll do it in a bit of a circuit format. So technically the muscle itself is having the rest desired and I'll try and keep my heart rate low. So it's not as much like a cardio workout. And I don't know if that's just completely contradictory to what you should be doing. I don't know if that's detrimental to the workout itself, but yeah, I'm all over the place. So I'll answer that last part very quickly because that's an easy answer. And in, in, in supersetting exercises in circuit fashion completely changes the programming yeah. and it does completely change the effect of the workout. So it is now more of a stamina endurance based workout and it is not building anymore. I have, uh, would you mind if I ask you some more questions before I continue so I can give you better answers? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, have you dealt with eating disorders uh, in the past? Yeah, so I struggled with anorexia for 15 years, and a lot of that was overtraining as well as okay. severely low amount of calories. So, okay. yeah, that was back then. Okay, and the reason why I'm asking you that is as someone your age, you're obviously very young, osteoporosis is very rare unless somebody has severely undernourished themselves for a long period of time. Were you hospitalized at any point? Yes. Yes, I was. Okay. Actually, after like coming out of rehab, so I worked a lot with Adil Khan and he did the follistatin oh, therapy for great. me, oh, the follistatin awesome. gene injection at the end of last year. So again, my body's primed in a point to build muscle and to, yeah. to gain that type of strength because of That's that. Good. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, I, so I, you, I going to give you, I'm going to say something to you and I want, I hope you can kind of trust what I'm saying. Okay. For the time being, and, and maybe for the foreseeable future, you probably can't trust your own eyes when it comes to how you perceive how bodies look, especially your own body, okay? Because of what you've dealt with and, and what's happened to you in the past, although you seem to be doing much better, looking at yourself in the mirror and judging your progress based off of your appearance, you are going to see things that other people don't necessarily see. It's not going to be objective. It's never fully objective when we look at ourselves, but your subjective opinion is very, very skewed in a direction that has led you in the past towards uh, some pretty poor health. So, so much that you could be doing phenomenal and your brain is going to tell you otherwise, right. which is going to fuck the, you. The only way out of this, okay, is, is not going to be to try to change what you see it's going to be to stop looking. So you're going to have to stop looking in the mirror and judging any progress based off of what you see in the mirror and what the scale says. You're going to have to completely submit and let go and judge your progress by your performance in the gym. 100% of everything you do, if you really want to move in the right direction, if you want to heal from what you've dealt with, uh, and by the way, the and I'm going to say this to sell you on what I'm saying, even though it's not necessarily uh, the right thing to say. If you do what I'm about to tell you, you will look the way you 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 think you want to look, although you may never really necessarily um, uh, be able to see it. Okay, so that's just that's just to sell you. But the truth is, you can't look at yourself and judge yourself based off of your appearance. You can't look in the mirror and say, "Is my workout working? Is my butt developing?" Is this leaner? Is this sculpting? Is this whatever? You have to completely, completely submit to performance. 100% of everything you do in the gym and 100% of everything you do with your diet has got to be focused on performance. And, and, and the one aspect of performance in particular is strength. If you're getting stronger, and I don't mean stronger like <clears throat> I can do uh, five more exercises at the same time or I can move faster. I mean actual stronger. I'm lifting more weight. I'm adding five pounds to the bar, 10 pounds to the bar. I did two more reps. If you just focus single-mindedly on that, like hard-headed, like I will not look at anything else. All I care about is how strong I am. You will start to move towards the path of healing. You will solve the osteoporosis issue and you will start to develop the body, the physique and the health that you're looking for. Now that's not where you're going to stop. But that's the only way you can start. Eventually, you're going to have to just focus on health. But I can't tell you that right now because that won't work. So right now, 
just focus on strength. I have a program that I think you should follow. Powerlift. I would, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll send you Maps Powerlift if you don't have it. I want you to feed yourself to get stronger. So that means hit your target body weight <coughs> in grams of protein. Eat when you're hungry. And if you're not getting stronger in the gym, try to eat more. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel, and here's the deal, you're going to feel uncomfortable eating more because your, your signals are all off. Because of the years and years of restricting, eating appropriate amounts of food to you is going to feel like you're stuffing yourself. So if you feel like you're stuffing yourself, you're probably eating the right amount kind of, kind of deal. So focus on performance, which is strength. Don't look in the mirror any longer than you have to. And when you do look in the mirror, try to, to adjust your gaze to my hair, my makeup, put my clothes on, get out and don't weigh yourself. That's the only way this is going to work. Anything else I tell you is going to get hijacked by this, this challenge that you've been dealing with. And it's in, in osteoporosis with a young woman. If we don't move in the right direction, this can turn uh, very bad, very, very quickly. And I've worked with people like this. So what I'm saying is very, very serious. If you're open to it, Jacqueline, I'd also like to put you in the forum and I'd love for you to check in with us once a month because I what, what I'll also tell you is that I'll give you that look that you want. It's obtainable, okay? Like, the, and you have the body, like you have the genetics to do it. You've got the small frame. I can see your structure. Like, if you if you trained to get bulky or to put weight on, you're actually going to get the shape you want. But the problem with that is the mental part. Yeah. Is it's going to play games because there's part there's parts during that process where you go through this, the body starting to shape and change. And if you've struggled with that in the past, you're going to revert back to that feeling and then it's going to make you course correct. And we don't want you to do that. We want you to stay the course, which is why Sal's giving the advice of yeah. don't look at the mirror, don't weigh, just trust the process, feed your body accordingly. Let's just, the only metric that we care about is more weight on the bar. You're benching more weight, you're squatting more weight, you're deadlifting more weight, you're hip thrusting more weight, and, and we're eating good amount of calories. All the other stuff, you got to trust the process and trust that we know what we're doing. And if you do that, if you submit like that, I'll give you the look that you want, but yeah. you got to fully commit. It may even be worth the investment to get a coach, to get a trainer, to totally. get somebody's eyes on you that gives you an objective um, uh, feedback and, and also, too, to just help reassure you uh, because it is so um, – crazy the the mental games you're going to be playing through this and the old default patterns that you had uh, previous to that so this is a completely different operating system that we need to learn and teach uh teach your mind teach your body teach your focus on to just uh being comfortable with uh, enjoying getting stronger and and the process of that and you know honing in on that so that would be my suggestion do you do you, have you are you working with anybody jacqueline specifically with this do you have a therapist well i mean i have doctors and therapists and dietitians that follow me to make sure, Wonderful. for example, to prevent refeeding, to have gotten my calories up to a safe place. Excellent. Great. But I suppose all the all the advice for strength training goes so much against the instinct of, for example, I know how to manipulate my body through yeah. may unhealthy like calorie deficit. And it goes against everything that I suppose it takes to strength grain gain. Yeah. So it's like goes against every single instinct you think of like resting through sets it just feels so yep. wrong yep, 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 yep. Yep. listen you, I, I i know what the answer is but i'll ask you anyway do you think you can trust your eyes and your instincts oh gosh that that is for 15 years i give me osteoporosis okay. so hell no okay <laughs> so so here's the deal that's a big step though that you at least that's, understand that's that huge and aware of that. yeah. that's huge so that so you know you can't trust your instincts you know you can't trust your eyes so what you're going to need to trust is our advice trust the people that you're working with and here's what's going to happen over time. I've worked with people like you, Jacqueline, okay, uh, in, in worse situations. Over time, those instincts are going to change a little bit. Or at the very least, you're going to be able to say no to those instincts and you're going to be able to, to, uh, to identify them very quickly and know the right direction to move. But you're going to have to go against them. In other words, if you're going in a direction that feels automatic, probably moving in the wrong direction. If you're moving in a direction where like, oh my gosh, like I should be moving more. Or, oh God, I feel like I'm stuffing myself. Oh, okay, I'm probably doing the right thing. All right, I got this. I can do this. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, we're you can, you yeah. can do it. We're going to put you in the forum 100%. and I, I would love updates from you. I tell you what, Jacqueline, can we have you back on the show? Can we do a follow-up with you in like 60 days? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's, let's do a 60-day follow-up, and, and hopefully that I think that'll help. And then we'll, we'll talk then, okay? So MAPS Power Lift is coming your way. Yeah. Set you up in the forum. I still want you to check in with us, okay, every few weeks to a month. 
and then we'll do a follow up in 60 days. So you got some accountability to to follow follow what we're talking about. Yeah, lean into the discomfort of this. Yeah, I'll be out benching you guys before you know. It. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, I like that girl. goal. I like it. It's not it's not that far away for Sal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so 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 much. You got thank it. you. God bless you. Thank you. Right. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, 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 it's a really hard one. It's tough because uh she knows though at least, well, which is big. Here's the hard part, okay? Just just full transparency. We're doing a podcast. We have a 10-minute conversation with somebody. And so it's like I got to hit them hard with a bunch of truths. You try thankfully, to get to the root. Thankfully, what's working for us is, is we've built a relationship with her and authority with her because she's listened to the show. So it's more impactful than the average person. But the truth is, like when I when I've worked with people like that, this is a process, man. Dude, oh. this is I, so many conversations. This it's client, like, okay, yeah. which I've trained many of these clients, is, <clears throat> this is a date. We're talking daily. Yep. So every day, you're right. Like this is like, sometimes multiple times. Like let's day. hope yep. that we have that kind of a, a, an impact on her that she really takes the advice. But that's why I want to do the follow up. I, I would want to be talking to her daily because yeah. every day there's going to be little things yeah. that are going to challenge her on this process and keeping her straight during that is going to be so important yeah. to having success in this. And so, you know, hopefully she stays in touch with us in the forum and that we can help guide guide through this. And because this is, you know, this is one of my favorite parts of this job. Is that's life changing? Yeah, you take somebody who's been who's suffered from that for fifteen years, and is that young and already dealing with osteoporosis, and you reverse that, and what you can, yes, yeah. and you and you get them feeling different about themselves, their body, and then in addition to that the bonuses they get the thing that they wanted, which yeah. is so crazy. Yeah. It's like well, it's funny because she'll yeah. have to detach from it first. I know it's yeah. you'll she'll have to not care about it and not want she'll have to not want it, not care about the it, irony. in order to get it right. Uh-huh. So funny. Our next caller is Kyler from Utah. Kyler, what's happening, man? How can we help you? What's up? Hey, pretty cool to meet you guys for the first time. So, um, so yeah, some details that I included. So I'm uh, 5'11", 220 pounds. I'm a little overweight right now. Trying to get that back down. Had kind of a rough last year. So getting dialed back in uh, near the end of last year was when I actually sent in my question. Um, I injured myself um, in kind of like... I keep having these injuries in my trap, in my rhomboid. Mm. Um, so I keep doing them with like barbell shrugs. You know, I'll shrug too much weight. I'm trying to kind of increase the weight there. Um, and then most recently, I kind of did the same thing by doing a pull down, um, you know, like a, an overhead pull down. So my question was kind of like, I am a software engineer. I do work from home, you know, obvious desk job. Um, maybe it has more to do with my posture, but my question was how do I kind of prevent those rhomboid like entrap injuries and kind of move forward, you know, strengthening that and, and find a better way forward. Is it your so. dominant side? Is it your, are you right or left-handed? And is it your dominant side? So usually it's my dominant trap. Um, and then the rhomboid, the, the further back when I was doing the pull down was my non-dominant side. Kyler, Kyler, um, have you had any previous neck injuries, any herniated discs or slipped discs in your cervical spine? No, not that I know of anyway. You, you play any sports where that might have been an issue, football, uh, wrestling, or anything like that? Nope. Okay. In my experience, repeated uh, issues in the trap, rhomboid type area can oftentimes come from an undiagnosed or diagnosed herniation uh, in one of the discs. And so when you shrug... What a lot of people do when they shrug is they'll kind of look up and bring their neck back a little bit and cause the mm-hmm. the the cervical spine to compress a little bit. And if that causes any um, pressure on one of the nerves that comes out of the, the spine there into that area, then you kind of get this pain and you, you press on it and it kind of goes away, but it doesn't. It sticks around for a little while type of deal. Does that is that what it feels like to you? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of similar. So yeah, it's usually the, you know, at the top of the motion on the barbell shrug that I, that, you know, and I'm trying to like, when I, you know, increase the weight too much, you know, maybe I don't have the best of form, then I I feel it at the top and then it's pretty debilitating, debilitating for the next day or two. Yeah. That sounds like a nerve. That sounds like a nerve pain, not muscle pain, um, you know, type of issue. Do you feel it now? Uh, no, I I've been, I, I kind of reduced volume after this. Okay. I've, I've also kind of been, you know, struggling hit and miss with my workouts. Uh, so I, I kind of reduced, I was doing a pretty high volume. Uh, I was doing uh, athlete Nexus beast PPL, pulpitous legs. 
Um, and I figured out that it was just probably too much volume and that might've been a part of the problem. Yeah. Overtraining uh, can cause uh, an increased risk of injury, but you- well, he also could be because he's sitting in a desk all day too. And his scapulas yeah. roll forward all day long too. Those yeah. just traps Posture could be over overactive and then he's crushing it workout wise. It could just be, just- but because it's like, uh, it feels like pop pain. Oh my God. Two days of pain. You know, it sounds a lot like, uh, like an impinged nerve yeah. rather than a muscle. So when you do shrugs, what you want to do when you do shrugs is you, you want to make your head as tall as possible. So do you have maps prime? Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to send that to you. We, we have something called a wall test. And in the wall test, we walk you through some spinal traction through kind of this shoulder mobility kind of, you know, movement. And what you're doing is you're pressing, there's a small nodule, uh, at the base of your skull, you're pressing that into the wall and you're lengthening your, your, your spine at the same time. So you're trying to make your head as tall as possible, as vertical as possible with yeah. your spine. So it's almost like you're giving yourself a double chin, yeah. but also trying mm-hmm. to make your neck real tall. That's the position you want to hold while you shrug. What you don't want to do is shrug and kind of look up or even look down. Cause that can compress, uh, the spine. Um, in the meantime, I would avoid shrugs until we really start to figure out how to get that that position. Yeah. But the wall test in MAPS Prime, especially the head and shoulder part where your- external rotations is yeah. especially important because, yeah, especially with your desk job. Like if we can get you to be able to maintain this nice vertical upright postural position that you can brace and hold and control and have strength in that. And so that's the thing is building strength back in that external rotation. So, you know, face pulls and things to prime before you do any kind of like shoulder work, um, you know, it's going to be essential to really just keep hammering that good posture. And ideally we avoid the shrugs right now. When you reintroduce them, don't be chasing weight, chase the technique, right? So after you, you've gone through the process of prime and you learn like the, the position that we want your neck, your shoulders to be in when you do the exercise, that becomes more important than adding weight to the bar. So I'm okay with you going back to shrugs eventually once you start to feel much better. But then when you're doing it, you're instead of you paying attention to like, oh, I could do 10 more or 20 more pounds, you're going like, is, is my posture staying perfect through the movement and only increasing weight based off of that? And so let that be your guide, your guiding star. Yeah. You know, even now while you're sitting there, I could show you something that might help a little bit. This is really challenging to do um, virtually, um, but I'm gonna. I could try walking you through something to show you a little bit about of, of what this kind of traction, uh, with traction meaning we're trying to create space in the spine might feel like. So if you if you sat up tall right now for me, I could kind of walk you through. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so kind of sit up, sit up tall. And I want you to mm-hmm. take your, your hands at your sides and I want you to supinate them. So you're going to face your palms forward, but bring them down, bring them straight down, arms okay. straight down. Okay. So supinated straight down, bring your shoulders down. Like you're trying to bring your shoulder blades down as far as you can. Now give yourself a little bit of a double chin. So it's like you're pulling your head back. No, don't look, don't, don't let your head go up, but yeah, your chin mm-hmm. back. You now, while doing that, now try to make your head go straight up at the same time. So you're trying to make your neck, don't yeah. look up. Keep that double yeah, chin yeah, and sure. then try to give yourself some, some Brace your core. There. Now, while holding that, now while holding that position, I want you to pull your mm-hmm. belly button into your spine at the same time. It's going to start to pull That's your, your forward a little bit. Point, there so. you go. Yeah, we're stretching so, straight up. So you, can you kind of feel a little bit of that, 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 that space in this neck spine area that you're kind of creating, that down in the shoulders, up in the head kind of? Okay. So, yeah, it does feel a lot different than, you know, anything I normally do. <laughs> okay. So that's like, it's a real simple example. I'm not there to walk you through it because I could actually show you some better ones uh, in person um, yeah. that I wouldn't be able to do here virtually. That'd be so a good, like every 10, 15 minute kind yes. of drill to do at your desk. Yes. Though, you know, so yes. that's great. You could now, a, a, another way to do that, that would be even better would be to go up against the wall so that you could mm-hmm. press that little nodule up against the wall while bringing your shoulder blades down while tucking your belly button and trying to create that, that traction and that length. And when, if you hurt your trap and rhomboid again, that should alleviate some of the pain because it'll create some of the space and take some of the impingement off the nerve, which is what I think is happening. This is zone one of maps prime, which we're sending to you. So we're going to send that to you. That's zone one maps. And, uh, you could literally, like in a perfect world, if you're working from home, I guess, <laughs> I've got you doing this every hour. Every hour, you just kind of get, yeah, like get up and do 30 it. 30 seconds. Yeah, literally 30 seconds worth of work. So it's not like a big thing you got to do. All you need is a flat wall. You don't need anything else. And you just go do that movement every hour or so. And you're just training yourself to, to feel what, what it's like to get in that position. And the wall is... 
The wall is just a tool to give clients feedback so they know where they need to be positioned. If you practice this long enough, you'll get to a point where you know how to just, like Sal can tell you, get your, you know, depress the shoulders, elongate the neck, and you'll just be able to get yourself in that position because you've practiced it against the wall for a long time. And then that becomes a very valuable tool inside the gym when you're flying in planes, when you're driving your car, when you're down on the computer, you know how to get yourself in that spot. Everybody else watching too, I coached through this on a free webinar, Maps Prime webinar. Uh, with Doug and took him to the wall and kind of showed him, you know, our compass test with that, our zone one test. Uh, so if you want to apply that and kind of do, have the same issues, you know, go there. What's that under a maps prime Yeah. Yeah. All right, Kyler, we're well, going to send that over to you. Thank yep. you guys so much. And, and thank you for uh, maps prime as well. Um, I'll, I'll definitely go through that. Uh, and I, I mean, I kind of thought that it might have been you know nerve related yeah just because it's it's so painful and like the next yeah. day i can't lift my head so oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah yep that's yeah. what it is you got yeah. it man cool awesome keep, well, keep us posted you. let us know how it's going man okay sounds good we'll <laughs> right. do thanks all right, brother all right you know who suffered from a like a really bad nerve issue um from shrugs was rich gaspari the bodybuilder oh, yeah. yeah he was heavy shrugs and he impinged a nerve so bad that he lost feeling and then it started atrophying things and he had to really work through. Wow. But yeah, because when you shrug, it, you're, you're lifting a bunch of weight, bringing the scapula up. And what happens a lot of times, your instinct is to bring your head back. You could down. see that that yeah. was his instinct. Even his when he neck, was describing yeah. it, he was yeah. doing that. He, his yeah. natural reaction yep. is to, to look and up. So you ha- he's got something going on there and he's never got it imaged or whatever, but there's something going on. And if there's a herniated disc or whatever, there's a little bit of space and that nerve is ready to be impinged. And then he does shrugs and he brings his head back and does, and then boom, push you, on the nerve. You also, don't, for days. you also don't think that he could potentially have just kind of started to form his posture sure. in that position. And yeah. that's actually what's causing, but it the, wouldn't cause that kind of pain that repeat, not the posture, but that posture now puts him in a, in, in oh, a, yeah, yeah, a yeah, more yeah. compromised yes, position yes, that yes, when yes, he does yeah. the exercise, it compresses yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that potentially getting him yeah. in a better position posture wise yeah. may actually just, if it's not an actual disc issue or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Look, if you love the show, check this out, go to mindpumpfree.com. We have a free peptide guide. Peptides are some of the newest cutting age medical interventions to help you build muscle, burn body fat, get better sleep, improve your libido. They're not drugs. They're totally different. Go check out our free guide, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpmedia and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 